Coming up on today's show, we're going to recap the latest Falcons news and rumors coming out of the bye and some pretty big uh, stuff out there on the injury front, especially on Marcus Mariota. Plus, we're going to spend maybe the back half of today's show kind of going over everyone's favorite game, which is let's do the playoff simulator, right? Let's see what the Falcons have to do, what needs to go their way so that they can host a playoff game and win the NFC South. But first, we do have some injury news and some other news to get to. Adam Schefter tweeting out that the Falcons have released veteran running back Damian Williams per source. Williams is said to be 100% healthy and well-rested. I think this might be somewhat similar to Baker Mayfield last week, which is Damian Williams going, hey, you guys want to give the snaps to the rookie Tyler Algier. I'm not really a fit in this locker room anymore. Can you please release me so at least I have a chance to go to a contender and maybe sneak a ring in at the end of my career. So that is the latest news right there. We're also always going to keep you guys informed on all things related to the Falcons. So if you have not subscribed, be one of the 16 people to do so and help us reach 8,500 subscribers. Producer Nick Roloff has been grinding on this channel. It would go a long way so that he can get to this milestone going into the holiday season. We got some more to get to here. So Michael Rothstein tweeting out that his locker room was taken by Logan Woodside today. So that's usually a sign that one is not long for being around. So we got some uh, some roster moves going on here. Falcons making some changes and whatnot coming out of the bye. Of course, the biggest one being Desmond Ritter taking over for Mariota. And that's what leads us to this tweet here from Orlando Ledbetter. Quarterback Marcus Mariota is not here. He has a chronic knee and appears headed to injured reserve for the Falcons. Arthur Smith, Arthur Smith said the decision to have his knee checked out was unrelated to the decision to start Desmond Ritter. All right, time for you guys to not just be sheep, but put it on your own thinking caps here. What do we think? Was this player injured? Like, did the Falcons and Mariota really decide, hey, Marcus Mariota is just physically unable to play? For the next four or five weeks of the season? Or was it, you know what? Probably in everyone's best interest if we kind of just hide Mariota on injury reserve. So that cloud isn't hanging over Desmond Ritter. Who is now the starting quarterback for this team. Coming out of the bye against your arch rival the New Orleans Saints. This upcoming week 15. So I'm going to lean more on. I don't think it's Mariota is actually sustaining a season-ending injury during the bye, by the way, which is always a bit fishy. But it's more of, hey, we're just going to put you on IR. We're not going to play you. We're going to shut you down so we can have Desmond Ritter just take over completely for the last chunk of the season. Now, how excited are you for Ritter's debut? Scale for me 1 to 10. Like I mentioned earlier, Nick Roloff has been grinding on this channel. And when the news got broke last week, he released a sound I've never heard before. So if that's where he is right now, it's way above a 10. Let me know where you are down in the comment section. Now, I will advertise to pump the brakes just a hair because this is a rookie quarterback, and as fun as it is to get some new life and some new blood at the most important position in all of sports, we often see rookie quarterbacks, and for good reason, go through their fair share of growing pains and have to build up. So if this does not go well, do not panic, right? There is no go back to Mariota, right? Raiders stinks. No, 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 no. Do not let one start against the Saints sway you one way or the other. Now, if you play super well, well, then you disregard all of that. And that was not a fluke. And it's the real deal. And Atlanta has their QB one of the future. Now, looking ahead for the Falcons, the remaining schedule looks like this. They go to the Big Easy in Week 15. Then they've got the Ravens on the road as well. So, back-to-back -back road tests, and it's never playing, never easy playing in New Orleans, and it's not easy playing against the Ravens home or away. Then you've got the Cardinals at home, and you've got the Bucks at home to round out the schedule. So, two tough road tests, and then two very winnable games at home. The NFC South is a disaster. It is awful. I do not think the winner will have an above 500 record. If they do, it's 9-8, and eight, and that is it. But there is someone that's going to win this division, and they're going to host a playoff game. And we have seen teams that underperform in the regular season that sneak into the playoffs because the division is hot garbage. 
tend to actually surprise people. Like, of course, there's the infamous Marshawn Lynch Seattle Seahawks against Drew Brees and the Saints when they were 7-9 and nine and shocked the Saints. They did a couple of years ago. Remember Taylor Heineke in 2020? They gave the Bucs the best game they played all postseason, and the Bucs won a Super Bowl that year. So just because you sneak into the playoffs in a bad division doesn't mean you're going to be an easy out. Now, the NFC playoff picture after pretty much all of week 14, we got Monday Night Football tonight, looks like this. Right now, it is the Bucks at that four spot at six and seven. But man, oh man, did they look downright awful yesterday in Santa Clara against the 49ers. So I think this division is wide open. The wild card is definitely out of play. Now, I do think there is a chance that the seventh seed in the NFC is maybe nine and eight, but I don't see a way that you're going to get two NFC South teams in there, right? One to win the division and then one to finish eight and nine or nine and eight and either A, not win the division with that record alone or B, be a wild card team. So winning the division, in my eyes, is the only way to the postseason. Now we're going to get through a whole playoff simulator, rooting guide, what to watch for, all that good stuff in just a moment. But I do need to share with you all our sportsbook partner today, BetUS, has a 125% deposit bonus waiting for the Dirty Birds. When you go to chatsports.com slash betfalcons, use promo code FALCONS125, that's going to unlock a 125% deposit bonus. Get started today. Have to use this link and have to use this promo code. All right, let's move on here and let's talk about the playoffs, right? Playoffs. We're talking playoff. Playoff chances for the Falcons. We ran some simulations. We talked to some big nerds. And the Falcons' destiny is in their own hands. So that is good with two caveats to it. All right, here's the three-step plan for Atlanta. Step number one, win out. And that might be the most difficult part of this three-step plan, but you have to win out. I, I think at five wins with four games remaining, that's nine and eight, right? That, and so if you were to lose one, eight and nine, I don't think it's going to get it done. But maybe with how bad this division is, I'm not betting on it, though. The remaining schedule, one more time, Saints, Ravens, Cardinals, Bucks. Who's to say you can't beat the Saints? Right? They're not good. The Ravens, if Lamar Jackson's not playing, Desmond Ritter against Tyler Huntley, well, that changes things dramatically. Then you've got the Cardinals, who Kyler Murray and Cliff Kingsbury might be divorced by then, so that could be a bit of a cupcake game at home. And at that point, you ratted off three straight wins. You're feeling good. You've got Brady at home, a guy who has tormented your franchise. What a nice way to stick it to him potentially end his career in Atlanta, handing him a loss, and leapfrogging the Bucs to the playoffs. But what do you think the Falcons will go in their last four games? 4-0, 3-1, 2-2. I want to be optimistic for you guys and say 4-0. I think it's probably going to be closer to 3-1, maybe even 2-2. It's just the way this team has played the last month and a half. They haven't looked like a team that's ready to rattle off Four straight wins. But coming off the bye, you never know. All right, step two of our playoff plan for Atlanta. The Panthers need to lose at least one game. Now, Atlanta got swept by the Carolina Panthers this year. They don't have them another. No, one and one, excuse me. Won the first one, dropped the second one. So they don't have another game waiting against uh, Carolina to hand them their own loss. So they need the uh, Panthers to drop at least one game. And here it is. Schedule-wise, you got the Steelers. Uh, the Steelers are pretty bad. The Lions are probably the best team here, and they're below 500. So the Panthers absolutely have it laid out in front of them, no doubt about it. And Wilkes has his guys playing hard for him. They've won four games with him so far, and they only won one with Matt Rule. But it is the Panthers. I wouldn't be shocked if they just go 2-2 two and two in that stretch here. It's not the hardest schedule by any means. We, ran, we just looked at it. There are a lot of easy, winnable games. But at the same time, all those teams are going to look at the Panthers and go, well, that's a winnable game. So it kind of goes both ways. I could easily see the Panthers losing one of those four games, though. Carolina's not giving me 4-0, 5-0, with five straight win vibes coming off their win in Seattle this week. Step number three here. Bucks drop two. They already have one game against Atlanta. So the Falcons control 
one game of the Bucks' destiny, Week 18 at home. But they need the Buccaneers to lose one more additional game. They need them to go at best 2-2 two and two in this stretch here. So here is the Buccaneers' remaining schedule. They've got the Bengals coming up. Joe Burrow's won five in a row. Then they go to the Cardinals. And I know I just shit talked Arizona like two minutes ago. But the Cardinals are not bad, right? Well, we'll find out on Monday night. But that's not going to be a gimme, especially with how the Bucs played yesterday. Then they've got the Panthers. And then they've got the Falcons. I easily see two and two in here, right? The Bengals and the Falcons could easily be two losses for Tampa Bay. So I think that is very much in reach for Atlanta. Ideally, though, if you got to play God here, the Bengals beat the Bucs, and the Bucs beat the Panthers, and the Falcons win out and in, right? The Buccaneers take out Carolina by beating them in Week 17. Joe Burrow takes care of business next week. And then the probably biggest caveat, the toughest thing, the biggest box to check is, oh, the Falcons have to go 4-0 in the last four games. But, hey, new quarterback Desmond Ritter could bring some life to this offense that has just been dead for the last month and a half, easily could happen. I say easily. It could happen. But I'm not so sure about easily, though. But do you think the Falcons will make the NFL playoff? Simple yes or no. Let me know in the comments section if you have faith in this team, you know, rallying around one another and rattling off some wins going into January, maybe being a team no one wants to play in the wild card round on the road. Appreciate all of you guys for tuning into today's edition of Falcons Today. Matthew Peterson here signing off. But if you have not subscribed, please go ahead and do so. And if you already have subscribed, hit that notification bell on and join the Nodi game.